Okay, we are rolling. Okay, so Alex. Okay, great. You mentioned uh, just wanting a few good portfolio pieces. Right now, the portfolio that you've got, I mean, we can spend a little bit of time looking at what you've got. But uh, uh, I guess it wouldn't be too relevant since it's, you know, 3D and 2D art rather than VFX. And actually, that I guess would kind of lead me into the first question I had for you, which sure. is um, if I don't have that many examples of VFX, should I still put them together in the video? Should I put them out on art station and then like remove them and replace them? Or what would basically be the best way to show off your VFX work in a portfolio? I think leaving the stuff that you've got on your art station that's more like uh, generalist work is totally fine. I'll just mm -hmm. pop that up here so we, we know what we're talking about. I think there's some things here that are relevant, you know, like uh, your ability to paint the wood and the ice is definitely good. Uh, graphic design is an aspect of visual effects many times with doing like indicators mm -hmm. and other kind of UI that's sort of sitting in the game. And, you know, just the general ability to like compose and paint. I don't think that it's a bad thing or that it would hurt you to leave these in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Very often VFX artists are generalists. So just seeing that you can kind of pick up whatever is thrown your way is a good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay. That's good to hear. Cause, um, the situation I'm in right now is in, I, I'm in my final year of a games programming course. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've really kind of been more technically focused over the last three years, but art has always been, you know, something that was very important to me. And only by this final year, I realized that's what I want to do rather than necessarily being a programmer. And, um, yeah, I guess there are some transferable skills, maybe not as much to VFX, but to technical art, which is more a general title that some companies seem to interchange with VFX yeah. art. That's true. They are interchangeable in some cases. Other times there's a distinguishment. Um, tech art in and of itself encompasses a lot, right? Like it could be everything from... Mm -hmm scripting custom tools to writing shaders to rigging characters to who knows what right like it's just a very much a catch-all term and one tech artist is not always able to do all those things because each one of those is a very deep skill so mm -hmm. with vfx it's kind of similar because a vfx artist might be somebody who does their own concept art and does like frame by frame animation or they might also be writing shaders and doing blueprint scripting and uh, really more technical stuff as well. And that all falls into the same. So both of those titles can tend to cover very broad range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Or overlap with um, each other. <laughs> they do overlap sorry? as well. Oh, yeah. Um, so I guess some other things that would be more general to ask is... Um, having a limited portfolio now, I'm sort of looking at, you know, this is more relevant to me, I guess, personally, is that um, I'm on the verge of graduating now. Mm. And the question is sort of uh, where I'm moving on from there. And I would really love to get an art job or an art internship. But the question is, do you think it's better to start applying now, even with a limited portfolio that could then be built up upon? Or is it better to wait and until... You know, yeah. you, you feel like you have, uh, well, I saw, um, I saw on your Twitter, you had, you had a piece, like a really nice, uh, materials piece, right? The Diablo shader that I made. Yeah. So you let's mean, bring that up yeah. just real quick. Um, I'll just make it full screen and switch over. Okay. So, uh, th I think this is a great start. I think if you get like a few more pieces like this that show your ability with um, shaders, it's like mm -hmm. freezing up, it's buffering. But if you show things like this that really convey your ability to blend the technical and the artistic in creating really interesting visuals, I don't think you're going to have too much trouble getting your first junior level position. I think mm -hmm. there's a very high demand for this kind of work. And uh, if you can just get something in there that like a little more variety, like a particle system as well. Uh, it just doesn't want to play at full resolution, but yeah, the, the 
the goal is not necessarily to have a massive portfolio per se, but to have a few pieces that shine, right? So mm-hmm. if you go through the class, like there's probably some lessons in here that would be most applicable to you. Um, let's see. I'll just go through this real quick. Uh, probably you're going to want to, you're more familiar with Unity, right? I saw um, like yeah, definitely. Yeah. The Unity logo here on the card. And so I'm like assuming that these were like Unity projects, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, most of them were. So because I spent a year with Unity, that's kind of why I kind of ended up being more focused on that because I know Unreal is obviously very much more, well, considered to be better by artists for shaders and the effects in general, at least in the past, mm. because Unity didn't used to have, I guess, as much of a flexible system. Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I really want to learn Unreal because from what I understand, it's much more standard. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's generally true. You get more mileage in trying to create an impressive visual effects portfolio in Unreal. Whereas with mm-hmm. Unity, you probably get more mileage doing your own indie project and just trying to get something kitbashed together and out the door just for the fun of making the whole pipeline front to back you Mm -hmm. can achieve that i think a little quicker in unity than on than in unreal but then the flip side of that is that the effects tools end up not being as robust out of the box with unity and but with unreal Mm -hmm. you can achieve some really polished visuals with the standard tools that are there it does take a little longer to learn in my experience it's more challenging up front but with you having a very technical background i don't think you're going to have much trouble with it so uh, yeah, and I imagine your course is going yeah. to be very helpful as well. Yeah, so. Totally, and the course, the the way the course is constructed is all, all these assets are already created for you. So you just download the source file and then tinker, and you can mm-hmm. kind of play around with it. And we see students having really good success when they take what's in there and they swap out the main elements with their own, built with the the mm-hmm. same techniques but they put a custom element of their own as the main one and they leave all of the supporting elements like sort of wispiness or like the subtle motes or whatever it is and they more or less leave them there with some some minor tweaks maybe a color shift or slight size change and Mm -hmm. it becomes their own work and it becomes a really nice portfolio piece with relative ease and you can still say like you know hey like some of these assets were borrowed from the course blah 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 and recruiters are generally going to be very fine with that they're going to say oh yeah well when you come work for us you're going to be borrowing assets that we've already made and we want to see how you repurpose those as well Mm -hmm. Um, as long as the assets that you're creating from scratch also carry their own weight in the effect and they drive the show sort of so that you can't tell that it's the same effect as what's in the class does that make sense like you've changed enough yeah it, it now it's different me. so the way it's set up you could do it one of two ways you could stick with unity that you're familiar with to try to just get something accelerated and done you can make some beautiful stuff in unity if you know your way around it mm-hmm. and and you can just do the unity lessons and skip the unreal lessons or you could do vice versa where you could say okay i want to dive deep in unreal over the next couple months and get something done there now Whichever, whichever one you do, my recommendation is to go deep on one of these projects. So like mm-hmm. each project has like a texture section and then an Unreal section and a Unity section. And then on to the next, right? Like the Goo has, uh, you know, textures and meshes and Maya and then Unreal and then Unity. So you're for sure going to want to do the texture portion to like create that custom element for each of Mm -hmm. these. What we're doing is more or less the, the primary element, right? Like here we're talking about building the dissolve map that's going to be used in the, uh, in the wispy thing. So doing your own dissolve map, right. And then swapping that out with the main dissolve map that's in there and doing Mm -hmm. something really custom. If, if that's the one that you're getting ideas for, that's great. Also, soon I'm going to be posting um, more student work. But in the forum, I've posted some of it. It's not uh, complete. 
But if you go to the forum, uh, let's see, student showcase right here, you can kind of start getting ideas of how people have sort of riffed on it and mm -hmm. done a variety of things if we go further down. So like, you know, they'll recolor the wispy one or they'll change the shapes or something like that. You know, here's like a nice green recolor, some mm -hmm. shapes there and, and things like that where they're getting really creative with it and um, trying something else. The, the part that I haven't started posting is the actual videos of the 3D work that they're doing. Um, but there's a lot of examples there as well that, uh, that you'll be able to check out for inspiration. But you kind of get the idea, like how you might modify what's in the class to make it your own. And that way you can mm -hmm. get a really fun, interesting portfolio piece that is going to impress a recruiter and an art team without actually starting from absolute scratch with, with nothing. So it's, that's that makes kind sense. Of the intent is to get you into your first job so that you can start making those things and pushing that in a more professional environment. Because honestly, I mean, I got jump started. I mean, I came to Riot. I didn't have much experience doing 3D effects at all, really. But I had access once I came on board to this massive library of textures and meshes and working particle systems that had good timing and all these things. And so they they kind of walked me through that. And then as I got familiar with where everything was, I'm like, oh, I could grab that and plug in here. And oh, this ability is like that other one, but it's square instead of round. So I'll draw a square decal instead of a round one or whatever, right? And so mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a good way for you to accelerate yeah, your journey. If you're looking at graduating in the next couple months and you're hoping to get a job around then, I think you could probably get a couple really good portfolio pieces in that time. Okay. Um, could I also ask... Um, so you mentioned uh, modifying some elements and I was curious. Um, so if I was gearing towards a more realistic looking game, mm. because I'm at least like from how I see it, it, it feels like a lot of the things in the course, they're very stylized, which is great. I love hand painting and I love these workflows, but how, so if, if you were to try and uh, gear these effects towards realism what would you change if and then what would you put emphasis on for example so i think that's a great question i think the first thing that comes to my mind is maybe steer clear of the lightning bolt because that one is very handcrafted uh, mm -hmm. something like the goose blat is much more pbr ish <laughs> it's like it's it's a lit material but it's like a faux lit material so basically um Let's see, material, like if you go into the material setup here, I'm going to mute this. If you come into here, make this a little bit bigger. We're working on the window resizing. I would normally full screen it, but my screen also includes our video capture. Mm -hmm. But if you come over through here, so he's actually setting up lighting here. So it's like actually like capturing um, the edges on that goo. And he's trying to create like, um, yeah, so it's not showing up super well, but this here it's red tinted, but you can kind of see how it's like dissolving nicely. It has this like beveled edge that's lit. Mm -hmm. In fact, I wonder. So I guess if you were to make blood or something like that, this would be kind of the closest starting point. Oh yeah, this shade is going to work great for something like blood. All right, let's see here. And it's going to be done in such a way that, um, yeah, it's going to be done in such a way that feels more grounded in a realistic world. Or obviously it's not totally realistic, but it's going to feel much closer than, say, the lightning bolt would. Um, mm -hmm. I think the other one that might be good for you to look at is the wispy one with the purple wisps, because the way that that is shaded and moves and has this sort of feeling of being lit, that's going to also work nicely for a, a kind of what you're gearing more towards, more believable mm -hmm. styles and that kind of thing. So what's cool oh, about you, it? Oh, oh go ahead. sorry. <laughs> I, I was just going to ask, um, 
what what would be if you could categorize the different effects what would be sort of the key key ones to get onto your portfolio what would be i mean i guess everyone that's covered in the course it's kind of its own separate type of effect if you will yeah um well all of them are a an explosion and i started with an explosion because it removes the the factors of like uh it removes a lot of factors like attaching things to a traveling missile or how to do a beam or how to like script things up with like a cast effect and then an impact effect and all these things. It's just removing all those and just simply doing an explosion. So other components in a portfolio that generally help is like, can you do an ambient effect? Can you do a missile effect? Can you do an on character, like sort of buff or like a material shimmer or something like that. Um, yeah. Missiles is actually, well, projectiles is just something that I had a, well, I, I don't really know how to best implement it because you have to combine the yeah. technical with the art, I guess. Yeah. I think for just a portfolio, you could just do a parent particle and in mm-hmm. we go over that in the uh, fiery explosion. So, Yeah, in here, this particle system, you can just see how it's hooked up with, uh, with like, it has like a lead particle and then it attaches another uh, emitter to that that just follows after it. Mm -hmm. uh, You can see how that's rigged up. And so you could do a missile that way, that it's just all contained in the particle system. And then as far as like the impact, I guess you could put all the impact on a delay. That's kind of a janky way to do it. Honestly, you with a little bit of research, you could figure out how to do blueprint scripting to hook up an actual missile and attach a particle to it and then trigger mm-hmm. an event when it hits that it actually explodes. They even have a, um, a few like pre-made things. Like you can just create a new project and say, I want these things to already be working and I want a missile to already fire. The first person shooter is very easy to hook up, but for showcasing in a portfolio, I don't know which prefab you would use to do that. The other option of course, is to go on the unreal store and somebody else out there has probably already created this and you could just Mm -hmm. get something that works there. And uh, then just swap it out with your own artwork, you know. So yep, those are that some, makes some sense. Like, quick and scrappy ways to to just wire that up. All right, that's great. Um, yeah. I think that's probably most of the questions I wanted to ask you. I guess the last one is a bit um, is quite general, but it would be more about working in a studio. Mm-hmm. Is there a quality that you would look for in an artist other than the technical ability? that you would say is like most important to have to be oh, definitely. productive. Or- so I would say, I would say more than anything, I look for teachability, especially in a junior artist. I want to see potential for them to just learn and grow. I want to see a hunger for learning. I want to see a humility that they understand that they don't know everything but that they're rapidly acquiring new knowledge and that once they come into a studio, they're just going to take off. They're, they're just going to really accelerate. So because a junior artist, you're not going to know it all. You're not going to be there already. And so I like to just understand that they understand that, <laughs> that they're not yeah, going to have to be uh, served a bit of humble pie of like, actually you thought you were good, but it turns out, you've got a lot long way to go. You've got a lot to learn, you know? Uh, So just, I've seen that happen. What's that? It's not good. I have seen that happen. It's not good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's really bad. I mean, you do get, you do get some really amazingly talented young artists that know their stuff and even still they've never worked on a team. And so there's a lot for them to still learn there. But if, Mm -hmm. if all they've ever heard is how amazing they are at their work, it can, kind of work against them because they might be difficult to work with. And at the end of the day, we are developers before we are artists and Mm -hmm. especially a VFX artist. You work very closely with game design and everybody else like on the team kind of interacts with you in some way. And so you need to be a good 
team player. But that's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a junior artist, definitely teachability. That's what I'm always looking for. Because if I'm talking to them, then it's already obvious that their portfolio is good, that they're good at what they do. But beyond that, that's what I try to look for in the interview. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I yeah. guess I'll just get started with the course, see how much I can make in the next few months or so. Um, I am still, uh, I mean, I imagine um, it's still encouraged, encouraged to post your work on the forums, right? To maybe get other students' feedback. and Yes. And we're going to migrate it, I think, to facilitate more feedback and better community. I think we're going to migrate it over to Discord. That's the current plan. Do you, do you use that Discord? sounds great, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Every day. Yeah. Um, some of the other art communities I'm part of, they use Discord more extensively. So that would be great, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm currently in, investigating that and should have that ready to go. I did a little bit of probing to see if people liked Discord or Slack better. Uh, I keep carrying Discord over Slack, and I tend to agree. Discord actually has better file storage options for us, where we're going to be uploading a lot of artwork. <laughs> and so, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I like that better. So, cool. Well, I'm really excited. I think I think you're going to take off. Uh, it, you know, I can tell you've been really proactive in the kind of work that you've been doing, and. The technical background, which is very hard to show in a portfolio, is actually going to manifest really nicely as you progress into effects, I think. Uh, don't entirely Thank skip you. over the artistic portion. I know like we didn't talk much about part one of the class, which is the concept art. Mm -hmm. I think there's benefit for you there as well. Uh, the art skills that I'm seeing here could use some refinement. I don't know that it's necessarily a huge deal breaker, though, where you've got some foundational skills that are good. It's not like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not like you, you haven't started. You've obviously come up quite a ways with your art skills, but where you're looking for more of, uh, you know, shader based, believable styles that, that, uh, and tend more towards the realistic end of the spectrum. I think, mm -hmm. I think you've got enough art skills to get you there. Um, just remember timing and composition and all the other things, right? Yeah. Uh, even when it's a more realistic style, art does not go out the window. I mean, it never goes out the window because everything in nature has an aesthetic to it and a beauty to it, even when it is pure, purely realistic. And sometimes we can flatten out that beauty by not paying attention to the underlying principles. So... Keep those in Thank mind. you so much for your advice. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Keep all that in mind, but definitely just double down on creating some cool stuff. I'm excited to see what you do in the class. Oh, thank you, Jason. Thanks for the encouragement. And it was lovely to meet you as well. Yeah. Once again, really sorry that it was this early. Um, but yeah, um, it's been lovely to talk to you. And I guess I'll talk to you again later, maybe right. with some more stuff to show. <laughs> that sounds great. All right, Alice, have a good day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.